Hi, Sean McGivern here with Kansas City, Kansas Community College Building and Property Maintenance Program. Today we're going to elaborate a little bit on the drain waste vent system and the piping that it takes to build up that system. First of all, we need to recap a little bit. The, the drain waste vent is the DWV, and you'll see that stamped on most of your uh, waste and soil piping. There's two main types that are used in the industry, and those are PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride, that's a uh, thick walled plastic pipe and then you also have cast iron which is used mainly in commercial type settings commercial buildings for all of their drain waste and venting systems any type of waste system a drain line a main building drain line has got to be properly vented the PVC polyvinyl chloride hard, hard walled thick walled plastic pipe is primarily used in a residential setting. The uh, code compliance across the nation, which is your IRC and your UPC, requires that no main waistline or uh, soil pipe that is below slab be less than three inches. Typically, most drain lines are sized at four through six inch, and that is in commercial settings and residential settings. Better said, code dictates that any waste pipe system, the, the minimum size vent to serve that waste line is half its size. Again, 4 inch drain line, 2 inch vent. 6 inch drain line, 3 inch vent. It can't be less than half. There's a couple things too you have to know about the waste systems. There has to be slope. So water runs downhill and it runs better downhill, uh, not at a level plane. So they, there's codes on 3 inch and 4 inch. Your slope is di dictated by foot of run of pipe. For example, if I have a 4 foot drain line, then I have to have 1 inch of drop in that, in that drain line. So if, if I had 8 foot of drain line, I have to have 2 inches of drop. And that's using the quarter inch drop per foot of run a pipe. It can't lay level on the ground. It has to actually drop in the direction of flow. Drain waste vent systems, eventually they all, buildings, homes, they all go to a city type sewer system uh, unless you're on a septic tank um, or if you have some type of pontoon that your waste is uh, flowing to. All drain waste vent systems terminate into a city sewer system. With that being said, waste systems produce methane gas. Uh, methane gas is toxic to us to breathe. So inside of our homes, we have P-traps. And to prevent gases from backing up into our homes or into our buildings, P-traps trap a pocket of water and prevent gas from backing up into our uh, homes and or buildings. Okay, now we're going to talk about water supply lines. Uh, predominantly right now in the industry, it's 2014, the, we still have copper, which is used quite a bit, and we have a newer product that came out in the early uh, 2000s, which is PEX. Uh, PEX is a cross-linked uh, polyethylene product. It's plastic, and it's thick-walled plastic pipe, uh, which gives, gives us great flexibility when we're installing. The degree of difficulty for PEX to install is greatly minimized by using the product versus galvanized pipe, which we still see in some homes today, and or copper. So PEX is predominantly used nowadays because of the feasibility of connecting it. There is no longevity of reduction in, in, uh, in performance. So the performance of PEX will perform the same way as copper. There is no loss, and actually there's less friction. So uh, with that being said, copper is still used. Uh, copper is a you know, rigid pipe. It is a metal, but it's predominantly used to stub out and to finish a run of PEX nowadays. Uh, so copper is still used. You, it, it, you still have the uh, difficulty of cutting the copper pipe, of soldering the copper pipe, which uh, nowadays mainly takes a flame to uh, solder. 
So you have heat, you have flame, which you could potentially have a fire hazard right there. But that's, you know, copper is still predominantly used. It's a great product. Uh, then we have galvanized piping, which is no longer used. Galvanized uh, piping is not used to supply water in any type of resident or commercial setting. Uh, it was back in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, up to possibly the 70s. So there is a potential of still running into galvanized pipe. The problem with galvanized pipe is it collects sediment, and over time, the inside diameter of that pipe is greatly reduced, so therefore your water flow is reduced. Okay, we just talked about PEX, and we talked about copper. Now it's, it's fitting to, to speak shortly about compression fittings. Uh, compression fittings are only used uh, for copper. And the key component of compression fitting is the ferrule. Yeah, imagine a gold ring wedding band. That's what a ferrule looks like. Uh, a compression fitting, what happens is the, the fitting, the nut and the ferrule are fitted onto the copper pipe, whether it be half inch, three quarter, one inch, inch and a quarter, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, the brass or the uh, gold ring ferrule is fitted onto the pipe, the fitting is slid onto the pipe, and then you hold the fitting in place and wrench the nut down tight to compress the ferrule around the uh, copper piping and that stops the water from leaking through that fitting.